we've got 30 adult male tilapia in this tank. They're probably a year and a half old. The tilapia in captivity will live for 20 years if you That's don't right. eat them. <laughs> That's right. Aquaponics is the merger of aquaculture and hydroponics, right? Aquaculture is raising fish, and hydroponics is a soilless medium of growing plants. And by joining them, we fix all the problems that exist in both industries. In hydroponics, you have a lot of fossil fertilizers that are uh, not really sustainable. They, they turn the water bad over a certain time, and you have to dump and start over. Uh, and the same thing happens in aquaculture. You're using all these chemicals to get rid of the ammonia, and eventually you have to dump and start over. Well, by merging the two, we never dump. We never have to dump water. It's a complete sealed system. The fish do what they do best. Uh, it's kind of, right, they eat, and uh, <laughs> their waste is pumped into the plant beds. The plants turn that with a uh, culture of bacteria into food and clean the water for the fish. So it's kind of a symbiosis, right? The uh, fish provide the food for the plants, the plants clean the water for the fish, and it, that's almost a closed loop. When we um, met one another, I saw the opportunity along with Aaron to, why don't we look at bringing our family together and seeing about creating a, a, a place where people can come together to create sustainable solutions. So Aaron's mother, Rosemary, got online and found this wonderful place in St. Helens, Oregon, where we're at with 20 acres and two homes, and that gave rise to this idea. And so aquaponics seemed to be the first project that everybody voted on because we all want to have good, organic, GMO-free food, and Aaron saw this as a wonderful solution that we could implement. I am one of the co-founders of Ingenuity Innovation Center and also known as the Paradigm Shifter. Tomato. <laughs> <laughs> right? Tabasco peppers, squashes, zucchinis, cucumbers, watermelons, strawberries, asparagus, blueberries, you name it. Lemon trees, <laughs> avocado, no soil. They're growing in river rock that's uh, three quarter inch. And we like river rock better than uh, lava rock or hydroton, which are some of the other ideas. Uh, one of the things we like about it is it's rounded. It, it, it is giving more place for surface area, but it's not holding on to the nutrient. And that's one of the things that we noticed is a, a beneficial way to go versus something like lava rock. The magic number here is 12 inches. It's 12 inches of gravel. We end up creating three zones. Um, the, the bottom two inches, which is always wet, always full of nutrient. Then the next eight inches where the water is constantly raising and lowering. And then the top two inches where it's dry to prevent algae growth and is constantly filling and draining. And this is really important because we get oxygen to the roots. So we have a rock shroud here that holds the rocks back and allows the water to flow. And inside that rock shroud, there is a one inch upstand pipe that goes through the bed via a bulkhead and then runs to the sumps. And then this bell goes over that one inch. And as the water level reaches the point of the one inch where it starts to spill, it vortexes and then it siphons and it will siphon all the water down until it pulls oxygen. And repeats. There it goes. It's about a 12, 15 minute full. It's less than a minute drain. Yep. Okay. And this happens all day, all night. Well, we also have a lot of activity with our worms. So they're bringing those nutrients down from the, the fish waste as well. And that's kind of the magic uh, key to an aquaponic system is having the worms be a part of it. They showed up on their own. I think they were on the rock yeah. to begin with. And you know, when the rock was put down in the quarry, they grow up in through it. They help to mineralize some of the fish waste and make it bioavailable for the plants. We do have to add four ingredients. There are four ingredients that are very hard to get in an aquaponic system. The worms do help with this, but the four ingredients are calcium, magnesium, uh, potassium, and iron. And your plants can really indicate what you're missing. Uh, we actually have some pretty good examples here of, of some of those deficiencies. There's ways to get those things. Iron is probably the one that's you just add directly. Uh, shellated iron, dissolvable iron. 
but you can get things like dolomite, which have magnesium in them. We actually buffer our pH because in an aquaponic system, you're always moving towards acid. So we buffer it with calcium. So that's how we get our calcium in. There's a scale, what they call the nutrient lockout. And as things get away from seven, some of the nutrients may be available, but the plant can't grab them. The water right now, it's always on. It's always filling. And uh, as it leaves, it goes through this venturi, which grabs all the waste at the bottom and brings it up and out and down to our sump tanks. And that's where the pump is. The pump pumps to everything. The benefit of this, too, is also that it's pulling air as it does it and it helps to aerate the whole system. So eventually, there's a plan to go off the grid here. We do have a couple windmills for a backup system. Yeah, and what I love about the windmill designs that we chose is that it integrates in with other renewable resources as well. So solar panels are something that we're actually building here on site to have integrated in. These are all repurposed materials. Uh, luckily, being up here in the Pacific Northwest, there's lots of uh, food processors. So we can come across these kinds of what we call IBCs or intermittent bulk containers. So these all had organic and GMO-free ingredients. Aaron um, did a lovely job cutting them down, so that's what our fish tanks and our plant beds are made out of. Everything that we've created here is open source, and the reason that we love this system so much is that it's modular. That's the beautiful part about this, is that these systems can grow with you. So everything that we've troubleshot and figured out is going online into a knowledge base where we can share information. So that's the intention here, is to get this kind of system out there for people to start using and growing with.